Hey YouTube, Corey Walker here again. In the last video, we went over two of the most popular CI/CD platforms, Travis CI and Jenkins. This week, we're going to use Jenkins once again, but instead of Travis CI, we're going to compare it to Circle CI. Circle CI and Travis CI are pretty similar, but Jenkins and Circle CI have some pretty major differences that we'll go over in this video. And toward the end of the video, we'll also go over some of the pros and cons for each one of these two providers. That way you have a better idea which one would suit your needs better. However, first, before we get started, I just want to say that if you find this video helpful in any way and you think others will find this video helpful as well, please hit that like button. And if you would like to see more videos like this, software and DevOps tutorials and security tutorials, please hit that subscribe button now. Now let's get to it. All right, guys, so Circle CI versus Jenkins is what we'll be talking about today. Uh, first off, we'll be talking about Circle CI. All right, so Circle CI is founded in 2011 and based in San Francisco, California. Uh, probably between them and Travis, one of the two most popular cloud based CI CD providers. Uh, it is always free for open source projects. They work for, with both GitHub and Bitbucket, so if you have your code hosted on GitHub or Bitbucket, you should be able to use Circle CI with no problem. If your code is hosted elsewhere, Circle CI probably will not be working for you as of right now uh, when this video was filmed, which is in 2020. Uh, but they do have a free starter plan that's free forever for projects with private repos, but it does have limited credits um, per week that you can use for that. The paid plans are all based on credits, so they don't have any paid plans that have unlimited build time or unlimited builds uh, and credits are used up in a varying sense based on what VM size or system size or system OS that you use to run your builds. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can look into that and be able to see how those credits are actually used up and how much they cost. The configuration for Circle CI is based on a config file that's stored inside the repo. And so all the steps that your CI CD pipeline does is all configured in that config file. So you can, if you have multiple projects, you can set up a base uh, pipeline in one of your files and then copy that same file over to all your projects and then just make the needed changes between each project in order to get all of them uh, up and running on Circle CI. They do have support for most of today's mo most popular languages. So likely whatever language you're developing in, they just support natively and you should be good to go. They do have plugins, which is similar to Jenkins plugins, but they're called orbs in Circle CI for additional functionality. I know they have one for AWS and one for like Sonar Cloud to do security scanning on your code automatically or a link to those in the description below. So you can check those out as well. And as I said earlier, they do have an enterprise edition that you can uh, purchase to be deployed in your own data center on your own servers. Uh, so that's one way that you can actually uh, utilize Circle CI uh, if you're a large enough organization. Some of the pros is it is a hosted based provider. So you don't need to manage or pay for your own infrastructure unless you do the enterprise edition. Um, and they do have a free forever starter plan for private or projects with private repos. So that's a very good thing since a lot of the other ones uh, providers do not have any kind of free forever plans for a project with private repos. So this is a plus for Circle CI. One of the lowest price points that you can have to pay for a paid plan uh, for a hosted CI CD service. Uh, the minimum amount for a paid plan is $30, which gets you 25,000 credits and three users. Uh, and you can you know purchase more credits as you need them. And I think they are $15 for every 25,000 credits. And as I stated earlier, they are configured via a config file in the repo, which makes it easy to replicate duplicate functionality very easy by just copying and pasting the config file and then just making uh, the few little changes you need to make specifically for each project. Some of the cons, uh, no unlimited build plans available. So no unlimited build minutes or unlimited build, uh, unlimited number of builds. And it does only work for GitHub and Bitbucket. So you're out of luck if your code is stored elsewhere. And they don't have nearly as many orbs as they do as Jenkins does plugins. So Jenkins definitely has a lot of plugins that can help your CI/CD pipeline development 
compared to how many orbs uh, Circle CI has. Uh, another one is reliance on the provider. So if Circle CI has issues or goes down, your bills don't run and you can't do anything about it until they are back up and running. And as I mentioned earlier with the credits, Windows and Mac OS builds require more credits per minute than regular Linux builds. And Linux has uh, some smaller images that you can use where it actually uses Docker images. Next up is Jenkins. Jenkins has been around since 2005, so they've been around a little bit longer than CircleCI. Uh, it's now probably the most utilized CI/CD platform overall today. It's very widely used. Um, it is an open source project. Many different people have been able to come over this code base and vet it very well. And all you have to do is just download the software and then install it and run it on, on your own infrastructure. And it does offer more support for more um, source code management platforms such as GitHub and Bitbucket. They offer more uh, providers that they integrate with than just GitHub and Bitbucket. One of them, similar to how CircleCI is configured via a config file stored inside the repo, uh, they have a Jenkins file that you store inside the repo that can specify the steps you want to run in your Jenkins pipeline. So that's pretty much similar to CircleCI, how you can just store the pipeline infrastructure logic as code. They do have over 1,500 plugins available. I'll leave a link to the in the description below to the homepage for all the plugins for Jenkins. Um, that way you can check those out and see all the different functionality that some of the plugins just will allow you to uh, utilize instead of having to reinvent the wheel. Uh, the pros for Jenkins is it is free and open source software. And since it's open source, it's been very well vetted by many developers for many years. And as I was just saying, they have over 1500 plugins, which will drastically help out with all the development for getting your CI CD pipeline to do what you want it to do. And it does have a large community for support as it's been around and it is open source. There uh, is very widely deployed. And so it has a lot of community support and parallel builds are built into the software. So um, as long as you have the infrastructure to run that, it should be pretty easy to set up to have parallel builds. And another good thing with Jenkins is that you can control your own infrastructure and have, instead of having to rely on a third party. However, it is somewhat of a con that you have to deploy on your own infrastructure as well because you have to maintain the security of these systems and the uptime of these systems yourself. And you have to pay for all the hardware and resources needed to keep those systems running. Um, the cons is it doesn't have any support plan since it is just open source and community based software. So, but you can find a lot of help and data on this online. Uh, the UI can be a little, seem a little dated and not as fresh and new as Circle CI, but that's not really a huge deal um, unless you're really concerned about the aesthetics part of it. So, in conclusion, we've discussed two of the most popular CI CD platforms today. Each one has some qualities where it has an advantage over the other. It all depends on what your circumstances is and what you are needing. But this presentation is just to try to help you figure out which one is more suited for your needs. If you've already used a CICD provider, which one have you used and why? And what pros and cons have you actually experienced with using that particular CICD provider? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear what you all have to say about all these different CICD providers and what your experience has been with that. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.